My name is John Hardy. I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon. And I've got a very special patient with me today. And his name's George Davis. George, you came to see me with a problem with your knee. What was the problem? Well, the problem was that I, did, I play a lot of golf, I ski a bit, I swim a lot, and I used to play a lot of soccer. And until the last few months, I'd never really had any problem. You'd get the odd fall when you're skiing, but not a really big problem. Then all of a sudden, out of the blue, I found if I had my knee bent for a long time, say sitting in a car, after an hour and a half, when I got out, I could hardly walk. And it was terrific pain. And then I thought, well, it'll wear off, and it did. But when this had been going for two or three weeks, I felt I had to have something done. And I've always been involved in medical research. And I spoke to a few friends of mine. And because I wanted to see somebody who was reputed to be one of the best in knee surgery, and so I came along to see you. And you had a very specific idea of where your pain was, right at the front of the knee and on the inside, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was here. Right and, at the front on the inside. And funny enough, if I moved it like this, I could get rid of the pain a little bit, but not permanently. So that sounded very mechanical. And what we did was an MRI scan. I'd just like to show you a scan, George, which very specifically, right there, showed a swollen bit of Hoffa's fat pad. And as a, a surgeon, I know that when people have been uh, cyclically loading that fat pad, it becomes scarred and painful and causes a little bit of giving way. What we didn't know about, if we go on for, further in the scan, was that right at the back here, you had a meniscal tear. So with this story of pain, with the edema in your condyle, we thought we'd have a look in. And I used one of the most recent bits of technology that's called the ambient arthrocare wand to help sort George's problem out. Would you like to have a look at your video, George? That'd be really good. So here we are above your uh, kneecap there. There's the kneecap. We can see a little bit of wear and tear on the surface of the kneecap. We can see a lot of wear and tear here in the notch of your femur. So we're looking at the femur here. Just stop there. Uh, this is the area where you've got a bit of wear and tear, George, from something wearing behind the kneecap there. This red arrow shows us the Hoffa's fat pad. This is normal fat here of Hoffa's fat pad. And this is the scarred white bit of the fat pad. So that becomes pinched. And a bit like, it looks like cotton wool. Yes. Mm. Actually, it's really quite stiff and hard, this stuff. And it causes some of the wear on your, uh, on your knee joint. And if you go on for ages trying to play golf with such a painful knee, you'll end up with osteoarthritis. Now, here's the new technology. This is the ambient uh, wand and it uses a very cold plasma field at the tip of it to dissolve the tissue away without burning it. Is this then sucking it? Yes, it yeah, sucks the tissue. It the tissue that's removed is sucked down the center of this wand and sucked away. So you can see where you've got damage to the surface of the joint, how it just uh, vaporizes it and smooths off the crunchiness behind your kneecap. I don't know if you'd noticed going up and down stairs it was bothering you. Oh, it was dreadful. Right. Um, they were the, the areas of physical activity which were the worst and I have to say since you did it, it probably took me three or four days to not feel any pain up and downstairs. Wow, that's very quick isn't it? One of the huge advantages of some of the new equipment we use is that it seals the blood vessels so you don't get bleeding into the joint and you don't get pain and that's why patients are recovering much more quickly from this sort of surgery. So here we are down in the intercondylar notch. This is right between the condyles of the femur here. And that's the ligamentum mucosum. That's a little bit of Hoffa's fat pad. And you can just see how it seals off the little bleeding vessels so you don't get any bleeding into the joint. And that's important. 
You know, patients with a lot of blood in their joint after surgery also form these adhesions that cause symptoms. So, if you don't mind me asking, where's the cruciate ligament? That's the anterior cruciate ligament, just That's beneath it. it. There's your anterior cruciate, just there. Absolutely, in really good nick. That's Which the one that all the soccer players have problem with. Absolutely, yeah. We often have to reconstruct that to get, uh, get them nice and stable again, the rugby players and mm. the soccer mm. players. And in fact, again, with this equipment, using that during an ACL reconstruction, we find that patients recover much more quickly because they haven't got the excessive tissue there to stop them recovering. So here's, uh, we've removed that tag of fat pad at the front there, so you're not getting impingement. And then we look at the back, because it's entirely important to look around the whole of the joint when you're doing keyhole surgery to make sure there's nothing else going on. We didn't think there was a tear on the scan, but you'll see just at the back there that meniscal tear, a tiny little thing which was missed on the scan. Look at that. So why was that missed on the scan? The scans are accurate, but they can't pick up everything. They're not that, you're not 100% sensitive to be able to pick up these small meniscal tears. If you leave that, it's often a cause of a patient's dissatisfaction after surgery because the surgeon hasn't spotted it and hasn't been able to get to it and then remove it back to a nice smooth ridge. So a lot of patients don't do well after keyhole surgery and sometimes it's because of this. What you mean the... Someone's missed the that meniscal tear. The investigation hasn't been thorough enough. Exactly either on the MRI scan mm. or subsequently when you're doing the keyhole surgery. And then I'll just use this ambient wand again to smooth off the last little remnants of that. Because as you know, so small stones in the shoe cause big pains, mm. whereas a big flat pebble doesn't cause any pain. Small area causes high pressure. So it's really important to get the tiny little bits away because they're the ones that patients feel. Look at that, nice and smooth. So we've now got rid of the meniscal tear, we've got rid of the Hoffer's fat pad impingement at the front, and we've got rid of the little bit of plaque at the top of your knee that was causing wear under your kneecap in the knot. So to get rid of the tear, you just sort of, like it's sanding it, is it? It's removing the loose bits. The mm. meniscus is a very important structure. It helps share the load around the whole of the joint. So we don't want to remove the meniscus, if we, you remove a meniscus, you guarantee within 10 years osteoarthritis. So we try and maintain as much as we can. And it's only that little bit of unstable meniscus that we remove. And uh, that's the bit that's going to cause your arthritis if we don't do it. <laughs>